Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing on Leech Chess, and I'm playing a Blindfold Simul. Yes, that's right. I am uh, playing three players, and I have zero side of the board in all three of these games. I'm just making my initial moves right now. I'm actually down a little bit of time because I had to adjust my setting real quick. It was showing the pieces at first, and I didn't want that, of course, to do a Blindfold Simul. Uh, so the uh, inspiration for this was Magnus Carlsen's recent Simul that he gave in New York to three players, Blindfolded. Uh, at the Son conference, and it was incredibly impressive, and it got me thinking, like maybe I could give that a shot, because um, I was just genuinely curious, like how difficult playing multiple blindfold games is. I've never attempted to play more than one blindfold game at a time, so this is completely um, new territory for me. And also, this is only the second simul I've given on Lee Chess before. I just played one for practice, like right before this, and. I was kind of toggling the blindfold feature off and on. Um, and I got a good idea of the layout and how this thing actually works. So we're going to do our best here and see how it goes. And I'm going to try to provide running commentary. The time control is 15 plus 15, so 15 minutes with a 15 second increment. And in this game, we have a Benoni it's shaping up to be. I'm going to play knight c3. Um, this one, I started with knight f3. You can see I have the move order list. So this isn't like a true blindfold game per se, because I do have access to the moves, but um, I think it's almost necessary because the way the blindfold simuls work or the simuls in general on Lee Chess work is the games just pop up. So, I mean, I guess I could cover up this portion if I really wanted to. Uh, I'm not gonna do that today, but that would be a true version of a blindfold simul. This is a little bit of cheating to have the moves up here. It's still very difficult, of course, but okay. So let's take here. Um, in this game, we have a Slav. I'm going to play the main line with knight c3. Yeah, so main line variation of the Benoni in this one. I'll play e4. It's pretty quick, 15 plus 15. Uh, I know Magnus's games that he played in the simul were also very quick. Um, I'll play bishop d3 right here. e6, okay. So... He's offering to go into a semi-slav. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play one of the sharpest lines. Yeah, let's play bishop to g5 there. Okay, so in this one we have a symmetrical English. They just played bishop e7. I'm gonna put my bishop on g2. Played bishop e7. So Azuaga declines to go into some of the sharpest lines that are possible out of this. I'll play e3. And I apologize in advance for uh, the lack of a viewer-friendly format for this. Um, I'm not going to edit in the board or anything. I'm just recording this and posting it as is. So you're seeing uh, what I see. I will post the links to the games. If you want to follow along, you can open the links like in a separate tab and follow along as I'm playing. Um, so Bishop G2 Castles was played. Yeah, I'm just going to castle myself. It's very important to try to separate the games in your head as early as possible. And that's what I've endeavored to do here. Okay, I'll play h3. Just planning to develop my knight to f3. Uh, Tybalt, if you're watching this, one thing that I found to be interesting, so I selected the blindfold feature on Lee Chess where it hides all the pieces, but directly below the board right here, you guys can't see it, but it shows the other simul games that are in progress and those have the pieces on them. So those are not hidden. So what I did is I actually put a couple sticky notes up on my screen so I couldn't see that. But um, just so you know, Tibble, like that's maybe a feature that uh, could be tweaked a little bit just so that the blindfold player is not tempted to look at these down here. So um, just a heads up on that. Okay, D5 was played in this position. Hmm, so he's offering to exchange in the center. We could go into a um, Tarash variation, which I think I'm going to do. Yeah, let's do that. Let's take on d5. Okay, so here, Black Castle, we're playing a main line so far. I'll play knight f3. Hmm. e3, h6 was played. Okay, so they're attacking my bishop. I don't want to take too early on, on uh, f6, so I'll just drop it back. A6, this is the Benoni game. 
They're trying to play for b5, so I want to put a stop to that, so I'll go a4. Uh, a capture on d5 has been made. Now, do I want to play d4? I think I do. Yeah, let's play d4. So we're in a Tarash variation now in that game. All my opponents are thinking. A4, rook e8. Okay, so I'm going to castle in this one. Just making sure. Yeah, we'll castle. Okay, bishop e6 was played. Just kind of reinforcing this pawn. So he's already castled. Did he play? He doesn't play knight c6 either. That's kind of weird. I'm going to try to do that as little as possible, like going back and look, looking at the move order list. It's, it was a little hectic at the beginning, so I kind of wasn't sure if he had played knight c6 yet, though. Okay, so his knight is still back on b8. He has his bishop on e7, knight on f6. The bishop has just been developed to d5. If I take on c5, he's taking with the bishop. That doesn't really achieve much. I mean, I could play that way, but... I might want to do something a little more aggressive. Actually, maybe I can do that and then jump my knight into d4. How about that? It's a decent option. Yeah, actually, let's play that way. Let's take on c5 in that game. So knight e4, offering to trade the bishops. I will take him up on that. So bishop trade on e7 happening in that game. Um, the knight... Is attacking my knight. So I probably want to play like queen c2 or bishop d3. I don't think I want to take that knight quite yet. I'm going to play queen to c2. Yeah, let's go ahead and play that move. Okay, this is the Benoni game. My opponent just played c4. Really? Ah, okay, so he's trying to, after uh, bishop takes c4, he's trying to play knight takes e4. I see. I was quite confused by the point of that move for a second. <laughs> okay, so this is a line, actually. It can get pretty sharp. So if I take c4, he takes e4, we trade. I can bring my bishop back to d3. Yeah, this is a variation. Okay, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that pawn. We're both castled, so... The alternative is bishop to c2. I guess I could play that move too, but... I think taking is better. Let's do it. Okay, so my opponent took on c5. I was thinking knight to d4. Right now. I'm still thinking that. That would attack his bishop on e6. I kind of like that move. Yeah, let's play it. Knight takes e4, yep, so we're going to have a trade. Let's, let's take. He'll take with his rook, so rook takes e4. Now my bishop on c4 is attacked, so I want to retreat it. Uh, bishop d3. Attacking that rook. Okay, here he played h6, keeping my bishop out of g5. But this is like an open invitation to open the position. <laughs> uh, like maybe e4 or take and then e4. I'm thinking could be good. Hmm. Maybe e4 first. Just looks strong for me. What else could I do? Knight to b3 attacks the bishop. He has three defenders of d5, though. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play e4. Let's open this up. I think with him playing h6 there, it looks uh, a little slow. I can do this. This is going to be tough with the time control as well. I can already tell. Uh, I think bishop g5 should be played.
supported by my knight on f3. Okay, he actually played the, the knight back to f6 in this queen's game, a decline game. That's interesting. So the knight just went back. Okay, let's play bishop d3. Okay, it's, uh, my opponent's moves on all boards. That's good. I need to recoup a little bit of time. <laughs> First impression so far, this is um, this is difficult but manageable. I mean, I'm kind of wondering like when the time becomes an issue, how hard it'll be if all the games are going. So I'm hoping I could like win one game or something pretty quick, and then uh, focus on the remaining couple. Okay, so I'll play castles. He's just played knight bd7. That's fine. Um, bishop takes d4 was played. Okay, so queen takes. I think he's fine. I think he's going to play his knight out to c6 then. So castles, castles was played here. Probably e4 to open the position is kind of indicated right now. Knight pd7. Let's play, let's play rook fe1 first though. This is the QGD game. Yeah, let's play rook fe1 first. Okay, knight c6 hits my queen. There's pawn tension on d5. Got to be careful where I put my queen. Queen a4, maybe. Is he going to push d4 after this? He might. I kind of think he's planning on it. Yeah, let's play queen a4. Just tuck our queen away on the side there. f6 was played in this one by Nitsud Prime. And that looks like an awkward move because he's blocking his bishop on g7. Probably want to just play bishop back to f4. I think this is good. Just thinking for a second. Hmm. So he has a bishop on g7, a knight on b8. Where's his other knight? He took that on e4. That knight is gone. Oh, and he has a bishop on c8. That's right. Okay, okay. I was just trying to make sure that he didn't have a second knight. That was what was worrying me a little bit. d takes e4 was played. All right. So I have my knight and my bishop on g2, attacking that point. I also have my rook that can jump in. Let's just play knight takes e4. Let's do that. You can take with his knight. I'll take with my bishop more than likely. This is Azawaga, the queen's gambit decline game. b6. I think I'm very, very much primed for e4. So let's play that. Advance in the center. He took... So I, I believe I can take with my bishop on e4. It's fianchettoed. I can do that. I could also technically take with my queen, but I think bishop takes is easier. Queen to d4. Hmm. hmm. Is that... So do I have bishop take c6 against this move? He isn't castled yet. So bishop takes c6, pawn takes, I take the queen? What's the problem here? His dark square bishop's gone. There's no bishop on c5. He took that knight on d4 way back when. So I can just do this, right? His bishop is on e6, and this will be check. He hasn't castled yet. Even if it wasn't check, this wins a piece, does it not? Ooh, it didn't show check there. Maybe I was mistaken. Did he castle already that game? I'm already forgetting. <laughs> okay, well, I think that was a, a fine move in any case. So I might be winning a piece there. Um, okay, so queen b6 was played. He guards the b6, uh, the d6 pawn, rather. He's hitting b2. I don't really care about b2. 
I'd rather just like speed up my development. So I'm thinking like rookie one would be a good move right now. Offering a trade. He can take B2 if he really wants it. Yeah, let's play rookie one. He took, okay, so what's, I really don't get it. What's protecting your queen right now? I have a queen on a4, you have a queen on d4. What's the deal? Okay. Queen d8 in this one. So he's escaping the e-file. This is the queen's gamma decline game. How many attackers do I have on d5? I have both pawns, my knight on c3. He has a knight on d7, and the knight on f6 is still remaining. Aha. So that is what he's relying on. Maybe I'll take once and then play e5. Or maybe play e5 right away. Let's play e5 right away. And attack that knight that's on f6. Okay. I wonder if I won that game with queen takes d4. It doesn't pop up if it's over. So I think I might have won it, he hasn't, unless he hasn't moved. Um, rook e1, bishop d7. So he's defending the rook on e8. Hmm. That knight is still stuck on b8. Is it a concern for him? Maybe I can play queen to d2 which defends the pawn on b2 and also connects my rooks. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. Queen d2. e5, my opponent went back to e8. So now I've got a big space advantage. I have pawns on c4, d4, e5. He has pawns on c6, d5, e6. Hmm. Let's just bring this other rook over. Just centralizing. I kind of want to build like a battery to attack him down the uh, B1, H7 diagonal, like leading towards his king. We'll see how, how that happens. Yeah, that other game was over. I think my opponent just dropped their queen. It wasn't bishop takes c6 check, I don't believe, but it was still at least winning a piece. Because after bishop takes c6, they might have had to play queen takes a4, and I could have taken with my bishop. So, I like my position in that game. Rook takes e1, check. Okay, so I can just take this back. Everything's good. He took the pawn on e4. Ah, because I don't have a knight on c3 protecting that. I did not see that. But I still think he's going to have some troubles here. Like, for one thing, that e6 square is looking really nice. Can I play rook e6? The pawn has been pushed to f6. His bishop is no longer controlling that square. He does have the bishop on g7, but if he plays bishop f8, I could take f6. His knight is still standing on b8. Okay, I'm coming in. Supported by my pawn. Rook e6. Doing okay on time. About 10 minutes. And winning that one game was a huge help. Just reducing our games from 3 to 2. Okay, f6 was played. He's trying to undermine the center. Hmm. So now he's got pawns on c6, d5, e6, f6. Looks risky to play this way. I'll probably just take it. Let's take. He took with the d knight right away. This is the same game. So e6 is covered by his bishop on e6, or on c8 rather. Knight e5, maybe? Just jump in. Jump into the weakened square. I think so. Because g6 is also very weak now. 
he's got pawns on g7, h6. And that g6 square is vulnerable. Bishop f8 was played. Okay, I can take this pawn, no? This pawn is suspect. It's just hanging. The bishop has been diverted. I can't really crank up the pressure on uh, the d pawn any further. So I think I should just grab this one. Key six. Yeah, pretty confident I can do that. Okay, queen d6 was played. I can jump into g6 with my knight if I want. He'll play rook f7. Do I gain anything from that? Probably not. It is a tempo gaining move. Hmm. Hmm. What if I take on d5? He can take with his e pawn, maybe. This position has a bunch of weaknesses, but I'm not too sure how to proceed. I might just double my rooks on the e-file. I think that's like a safe bet. Let's play it like that. So rook e2 getting ready to double. Okay, so we did take that pawn successfully. He played knight to d7, repelling our rook. Our rook is under attack. Taking on f6 is too crazy. We're not going to play that. Um, rook e6 is like the only safe square. So let's go back. Probably gonna he's probably gonna play knight c5, hitting our bishop and also hitting the rook. My bishop is defended though, so I'm not like super concerned about that. A6 was played. So if I double, can he take on c4? And then if bishop takes, take the pawn here. Maybe can do that. So he has pawns a6, b6, and c6 now. Hmm. So if I double, he takes c4. Take with my bishop. Queen takes d4. That is possible, is it not? Maybe I should take on d5 first. I think I will, just to be safe. Yeah, let's take that pawn. I'm just not sure about that tension down the file. Okay, so he did play knight c5 in the Benoni game, attacking my rook on e6, hitting the bishop. Um, hmm. Very tempting just to leave my bishop right there, or my, leave my rook right there, rather, and play... Wow, can I take on g6 even? No, that would be a little too crazy. I can play bishop c4, perhaps. That would be interesting. I think I should drop my rook back, though. That seems to be like the safest thing to do. But then can he take? Queen takes and then bishop b5. He can do that, can't he? Skewering my queen and my rook. Oh, yeah, I gotta be careful. Maybe I should go bishop c4. And offer to uh, sacrifice the exchange on e6. So if bishop c4, he takes e6, I take with my d pawn, I'd be threatening e7. He can play bishop e7, though. Hmm. Not quite sure I'm getting enough there. I really want to take on g6. Like with my bishop. But he can take on e6 with his knight. Ooh, this is tough. Key decision to be made right now. I don't know. Bishop c4 seems very interesting.
I don't quite trust the move, but <laughs> maybe I should bring my rook all the way back to e1. Yeah, let's let's do that. We'll be safe. Mm. I don't think I have time to figure out the ramifications of the other move. So e takes d5 was played here. Um, my opponent's a little bit low on time. Okay, I'm gonna complete the doubling, I think. Knight g6. Does knight g6 win anything? No. Let's double. So we got him thinking on both boards. So my rooks are doubled up. I'm looking maybe to get this knight into g6 still. Because he has a rook on f8 that's vulnerable. Also, his knight placement is strange. Like, he has a knight on e8 and a knight on f6. They're protecting each other, but... Like, this knight back on e8 is kind of superfluous. He took on d3. I should take with my queen. He can take that pawn on b2, I noticed. But we'll see if he actually does. e6 is a really weak square. I want to get my knight in there if I can. Like, knight g5 to e6. I think I can maybe pull that off. I wonder if he's going to take that pawn. So I have a queen on d3, pawn on d5, rook on e1, knight on f3, bishop on f4, pawn on h3, pawns f2, g2, king on g1. Yeah, I think I can get this in here. He's got two bishops, so i gotta be got to be cautious about that. Where he took his pawn on f6, so that's gone. Bishop d7. Allowing me to take if I want. Maybe bishop g6 is a good move right now. Knight g6. Rook f7, knight e7, check. What am I getting out of that? You know, I'm just going to play that just to gain some time. His pawn is on h6. It's got to be because he played h6 earlier on. So let's do that one. Seven minutes to his four minutes, 30-some seconds. He's got to play rook f7, I believe. Knight e7 check kind of looks like it does something, so I'm probably going to play that. Because he has to go to f8 or h8. I have this battery with my queen and bishop. Queen f6 was played, so he's hitting my bishop on f4. I think queen g3 is a good move now. Just to... Um, Support the bishop. Also, knight e4 becomes a threat in that case. Okay, rook f7 was played. Give a check on e7. Let's do that. So knight e7 check, hitting that king. If king f8, it'd be really nice to play... Can I play bishop g6 in that case? I think I can. That would trap his rook. It has no squares to go. It's blocked from going to f8. And if he takes on e7, I take with my rook. I can do that now. So that's looking good. So he's under four minutes here. I have about seven. Rook e8 was played on this board. So the rooks are opposing each other. If I take, he takes with the bishop, knight e4. Hmm. Can also play the rook into e6 once again. Hmm. Rook into e6, he takes, pawn takes. Looks tempting, but he has h6.
Rook e6 takes, maybe knight takes? Could be decent. Or trade first and then knight e6? I kind of like his bishop just floating out here, though. It's somehow helpful. Okay, let's play, let's play the rook in. King f8 was played. Okay, so what's stopping bishop to g6 now? Is my knight on e7 fine? It's doubled up. If I play bishop in, he can't really do much. I don't think. Yeah, all right. Got to go with our instincts. As far as I'm tell I can tell, I think I'm winning material there. Both opponents thinking. He took... So now rook takes. So we've won the exchange. If he takes with the queen, I have my other rook as backup. So clearly that's good. And it's a prime took. And I was thinking take with the knight. Because I think taking with the pawn, he... Like that pawn's not that dangerous yet. I'd rather take with the knight. So that I can attack that bishop on f8. He has pawns on a6, b7. I have nothing on the queen side. But I'm attacking that d-pawn. This could boil down to like an opposite colored bishop position. I think that's possible. I'm a little bit worried about the clock in this one, so... Gotta play quick. There is that 15 second increment that helps, but I can't rely on that. Knight e4. Okay, I was wondering about that move. So my bishop on g6 is attacked, but isn't he hanging... Oh, he's not hanging e8. Okay, he's not hanging e8. That's important. So he's trying to disrupt my rook coordination with that move. I can play rook f7 check, king g8. And then somehow defend this bishop. What else would work here? I can sack the exchange back. Hmm. I can take on d7. Maybe I should do that just to be simple. Yeesh, this is getting tough. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take on d7, just for simplicity's sake, and then I'm going to take on e4 after he moves there. Uh, like queen takes d7 is what he'll play. Bishop d7 back. Okay, so he's hitting my knight. I have this queen bishop battery. So if I take d6, he's going to take on e6, is his point. But I can take f8, is the thing. If bishop takes d6, bishop takes e6. I don't like that. Yeah, so let's take that bishop on f8 instead. The good news is that these positions are simplifying somewhat. The bad news is the clock is ticking. <laughs> so let's take that knight on e4. He has 2 minutes and 52 seconds remaining. He took. So I could take with my knight, rook, or queen. Correct. Seems to be the case. We both have a knight remaining. Um, I think I should take with the queen. If knight takes, can he take d4? Might be able to. Yeah, I should take with the rook, actually. No, I'll take with the queen. Hmm. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so bishop takes d6. Oh, he took with the queen. Uh huh. Wait, so is his pawn still on h7 defending the pawn on g6? I think it is. Okay, let's just take that. Knight f6, hitting the queen. 
His queen is on d7. Let's just bring our queen back here. That's safe, I think. Queen f5, hitting that pawn on d5. Maybe bishop e5 now. Yeah, let's play bishop e5. Here my opponent played b5. I'm up a pawn on the king's side, but it's not easy. Hmm. I have this, this knight on c3, all right. Tricky, tricky. His knight's on f6. I can bring my rook up to e5 if I want. Supported by that pawn. Okay, let's do that. b5 was played. He's getting his pawns rolling. I want to create like a mating net with my dark square bishop. It's a6, b5. Queen c7, maybe? Or queen c3, rather, trying to get into c7. Let's try that. Give it a shot. Queen d6. This is supported by my pawn on d4. Hmm. I need to reroute my knight. It's not doing much right now. Okay, knight e2 it is. My rook is protected by this pawn on d4, I believe. So if he jumps in, I'm gonna play knight to g3 and try to trade. That's the plan. Three minutes remaining here. The good news is we're getting a little closer to end games. I mean, we practically are in an end game uh, in the other one. And this one, if I can like trade knights, Getting those knights off the board would be a help because knights are always hard to calculate in a blindfold game what they can do. Played rook d8, okay. So he still has that knight on f6. What if I play knight f4? Knight f4 looks good, doesn't it? So rook on e5, I'm threatening knight e6 actually. His king is still on f8 there. Probably needs to move his king, in fact. So I have queen on d3, rook on e5, protected by the pawn on d4. Knight coming to f4, threatening knight e6. He has queen on d6, rook on d8, king on f8, knight on f6. Looks bad. I mean, if king g8, uh, queen into g6 maybe? It's the antidote. There's lots of threats brewing around his king. Three minutes and 16 seconds left there. The other guy is thinking a lot after my queen to c3 move. He does play king to g8. Okay, so let's bring the queen into g6. Threatening stuff. He has got pawn on, pawns on g7 and h6. Queen c3, queen f7. Okay. Okay. Queen c5, so he's attacking this pawn. That much is clear. Bishop h8 even is possible. <laughs> it's a completely bizarre looking move, but it's actually looking pretty good. 
Um, but I'm going to play queen c5. Yeah, queen c5. He took on d4? What? Is the pawn on d5 gone? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Was this file open? I thought there was a pawn on d5. I guess I'm wrong. Huh. So he's hitting my knight. My rook on e5 is under attack, but I have a move like rook e7. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, did I play? Really hate to do this, but I'm just not sure. Is my back rank weak? That would be a shame if my back rank was weak. Is he threatening queen to d1? And if so, how do I stop that? Did I ever play a Luft move? Maybe not. Ooh, ah, that, that hurts. Ah. This might be the case that I can't defend then. Because, like, what am I going to do? I did castle. I did castle while, a while back. What happened with this? E takes d5. Ah, he played d takes e4 way back. I Yeah, okay. I see what happened. Hmm, I'm disappointed by that. I'm really not sure what to play now. Hmm. Because I think I get back rank checkmated. If I don't address that, I'll just take one more look at it. Hmm. Yeah, I never played a left move. So I have pawns here, here, and here, f2, g2, h2, and nothing to show for it. All right, I just got to move. Oh, I'm really low on time on this one. a5. Okay, my plan was uh, bishop back to b2. And then trying to go queen d4. Yeah, queen takes f4, he played. All right, let's go g3, I guess. Maybe we'll get lucky or something still, but yeah, I think I messed up big time in that one. Just totally forgot. I, th I thought there was a pawn on d5, but he had captured on uh, e4 recently. It's rough. a4. Okay, so queen d4 now. And we're threatening mate. On h8. Well, we've won one game. That's nice. And this one is looking good. I don't think I should lose this game. But that other game is looking bad. Queen to d2. Okay, so can I come into e7? I'm just going to try it because there's really nothing else. He's running. Okay, so if I check... Where's our bishop? The bishop's on b2. So if I check a3, which way is he going to go? Queen on d4, bishop on b2. I feel like there's close to a mating net here, but I'm not sure where it is. Okay, let's let's give it a check. We just got to gain some time. Queen d1, we got to move our king. King g2, he's probably going to check here. Queen d5, yep. Um, let's go back to g1. Got to move quick. K3. 
king to g8 he played. Okay, let's just go back. Played king f8. So if I check h8, he blocks with his king. King e7 would be bad because I can check here. King here he blocks. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take the draw there. I just don't know what else to do. All right, that was a draw. Well, good game, Nitsa Prime. I think I'm okay with that. I mean, your king was kind of weak at the end, but I'm really not sure. Okay, let's go king back to g2 now. I'm down a piece, but he there's a mate threat on g7. Maybe he doesn't see that queen d5 check followed by king to g1. Can I claim a repetition? Wow. Okay, I'm gonna I'm claiming that draw. Wow, okay. Wow, <laughs> we saved that one down a down a piece there. I think he could win it with 90 h5 at the end though. Maybe he didn't see it, unless I'm not looking at it correctly. Okay, I think the simul is over. There's no other games. Um, let's go back to the simul. Okay, yeah, there you go. There's the three games. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I could have won that uh, game against Azuaga, maybe. Before I drop the piece, of course. Let's take a look at them in order. Okay, so here's the first one. Take off my sticky notes because I don't really need them anymore. So this was the first game that was over like pretty quick into the simul. And it transposed into a Tarash. Okay, so he actually did castle and I didn't realize that. Get rid of these challenges. The initial stages of the game were hard to uh, remember later on. Yeah, because all this time when I was playing this, I I, I thought he hadn't castled yet. So I thought my position was a lot more um, promising than it was. So took here, took here. And even though um, he was still castled, queen d4 was still a really big blunder. Yeah, because a bishop takes c6. And I've removed the defender of his queen. I thought it was even better because I thought I was playing bishop takes c6 with check. Well, it turned out not to be the case. So, yeah, if he had played some normal move, the position might be about equal. I do have the bishop pair, but um, hard to see how it's going to be too devastating right here. Yeah, you can see the computer eval is like close to equal, and then suddenly he plays queen d4, and all of a sudden, white's advantage goes through the roof. Yeah. So that was one game, and that was really nice to get out of the way. I, I, <laughs> playing three games in time pressure like that at the end would have been really tough. So that was the end tune game. Um, let's look at the... Azawaga game. Okay, so in this one, yeah, at one point I was plus four and a half a little bit later. You guys probably can't see that. Um, but I was plus four and a half according to the engine. How do I get rid of these challenges? People keep challenging me. <laughs> um, let's kind of go forward. I think I played okay. Yeah, I mean, like round about here, I have more space. He's getting pushed back. I had trouble visualizing that central tension later on. And I doubled up. Knight into g6, rook f7. I was correct that I was winning an exchange here. I thought he should play king h8, so that knight g6 would just be like a repetition. And if king g8, bishop g6, he has the rook available to come to f8. So this happened. I played bishop g6 on the exchange as I thought. Yeah, knight e4. Okay, so what did I miss here? I missed that I could play, according to the engine, rook f7 check, king g8, knight takes e4. Okay, and then if queen takes g6, I guess just take on d7, his bishop would be hanging. I see. So rook f7, king g8, knight takes e4, uh, d takes e4, bishop takes e4 is possible? Why is that? Is it my rook hanging? Oh, um, wait a second. I think I was reading the wrong thing. Rook f7, king g8, knight takes e4, d takes e4, queen takes e4. Ah, okay, queen takes. Then the bishop remains defended. Yeah, that's what I missed. I, I knew that knight e4 was trying to cut off the coordination between my queen and my light square bishop, but um, 
I didn't see that I could reestablish it. That rook f7 move I should have thrown in, though. I just went rook takes d7, just winning a pawn. And after this, I still am up a pawn, but I, I had a lot of trouble with um, seeing this whole sequence. Yeah, like this whole time, I thought that the d-file was blocked. I thought black had a pawn on d5. Like this pawn that was on c6, I thought it was on d5. That's that's too bad. <laughs> knight f4, um, seemingly allowing queen takes e5 maybe, but that would lose to knight g6. Check. And then I go win his queen. So he played king g8. Yeah, and this is just a huge blunder. Oh, he actually could have taken on e5 even because of this. Queen takes e5, and I can't take back because of rook d1 checkmate. Yeah. Well, I am happy that I at least had the uh, presence of mind to realize that there was no uh, pawn that I had moved. So my my king was back ranked. So like I can't play like rook e7 going for mate because he just checkmates me on d1. So as much as I hated to do it, I played rook e1. Now I'm, I should be losing, but somehow miraculously escape with a draw. I guess he just didn't see that he could play uh, knight h5 at the end. Like right here, for instance. Knight h5, and he's defending g7. Should be winning for him. Hmm. Okay, so pretty well played game otherwise. Just uh, made that visualization error. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the Benoni game, final one. This was a very interesting game. Uh, so we actually played some theory in this one. Yeah, this c4 move. So I take on c4. Knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, bishop d3, rook e8, bishop g5. I played this before, I think, without the pawns on uh, a6 and a4. So, like, this pawn back on a7, this one on a2. So, I, I had, like, some prior knowledge of this type of position. Computer likes my position here. I mean, I've got a pretty big lead in development. Bishop takes a4. It thinks that that is bad. Rook e6 would have been better to play bishop h6 and try to exchange those dark square bishops. That is, like, the sole defender of his king, so that makes sense. Okay, so all this happened. Yeah, I took the pawn on f6. Ooh, I could have played bishop takes g6 instead. The best move was bishop takes g6. How does that line work? Bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes. Go for an attack against his king. Wow. Yeah, that's that's way too complicated for a blindfold game. And I guess like I have an initiative after this, even though he has like an extra rook, um, or uh, an extra exchange rather. Yikes. I mean, you got to make like practical decisions in these blindfold games. Um, it's very important to do that. I mean, that's why I was like a little happier later on when this one got to an end game because it was so complex earlier. Seems like I played pretty reasonably though. Again, I'm like kind of happy with this game. Here, apparently, I should take on e8 and then play knight e6. Um, rook e6, rook takes, knight takes. Yeah, I'm down a pawn, but like the chances that I win this d6 pawn are pretty high. And that's kind of why I went into this. Like here, no problem visualizing the position at all. It's reduced. Um, I know I have queen plus dark square bishop versus his queen and light square bishop, so I was happy with that. And I knew that I would be able to create mating threats around his king. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to reorganize, defend the d5 pawn, drop the bishop back, and get on the same diagonal. Um, create this queen bishop battery with the queen leading to create mating threats. Okay, so here, probably good I went for the draw. Uh, apparently I'm better, but um, there's no mate or win of material. I mean, I was looking at stuff like queen h8 check, and he can't come to e7 because of bishop a3 check, which uh, will actually be mating. But um, if queen h8, uh, queen g8, he can offer a queen trade. He can always pester me with that. Like queen f6, queen f7. Don't think there's quite enough that I have to checkmate him. So I think settling for the perpetual here, and it, it's too dangerous for him to go to the center too, I think. Yeah, actually, king e8 just loses immediately to queen h8 check, and he'd have to block with his queen and get checkmated. So he doesn't really have a choice in the matter. So, um, you know, um, all in all, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the, the way this simul went. We, we got that one game out of the way. That was a huge help. I mean, I, this would be really tough with three games in time pressure. Um, I didn't have as much trouble visualizing three games as I thought I might be because, like I said, the the um, most I've ever done is a single game blindfolded. So this was, uh, <laughs> you know, taking on two more than that. So didn't have a problem with that. It's like the, the things that I get hung up on in blindfold, it's not like calculating variations so much. It's just like forgetting where certain pieces or pawns are. 
Like this was a really good example, this game, because like this whole time, like somewhere right around here, I just lost the thread and I thought there was a pawn on d5 and the switching back and forth between the other game um, might have had something to do with that. And now like they play queen takes d4 and it's like panic. It's like, oh boy. <laughs> so very, very lucky to escape with a draw after that blunder. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, please let me know any ways I can improve. Uh, sorry again about not having the board. Um, you're just kind of seeing my point of view on this one. So hope that was interesting nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do more slammels in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.